Well, it's personal between me and I'm going to do you some serious harm, you big stiff idiot. The Untouchable True School Sports Empire proudly presents something the boxing game's been missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. All right, so it's been a little bit of time since I made a video about Demetrius Andrade, and I want to make this very clear. I don't care if he got destroyed and even exposed by Benavidez. I don't care. He's still one of my favorite fighters, and I and and um. I'm looking forward to seeing how he closes his career because I don't think the Demetrius Andrade story is done. Funny enough, really interesting plot twist has been thrown my way and your guys' way as it was reported a couple weeks ago. I saw it a couple weeks ago, but never had a chance to make a video about it, so I'm making the video about it now. Andre Rogier, who is one of Andrade's you know, lead trainers, has confirmed and uh, reported himself that Demetrius Andre will no longer be competing as, as, as a super middleweight. He will not be going back down to 160. Now, before I get into the comments, the quotes, let me just voice some of my displeasure, displeasure hearing this news. First and foremost, if he's going back down, if he if he's going back down to 160, then in my opinion, in my mind, Andre lied to me. He lied to me and he lied to the fans because I was told that he vacated the belt with Johnny Beck because he couldn't make 160 no more. That was one of the reasons that, that was stated that he didn't want to fight Johnny Beck. Why he vacated the belt. He couldn't make 160, so it's time to go up to 68. So if you're coming back down to 60, it means you can still make the weight, which now makes you question, why the hell did you get rid of the belt? Because I don't think Andre would lose anybody at 68. Truthfully, um, that he could have fought. You know, like the, the I don't think he would have lost to Johnny Beck, to be honest with you. Um, so now I'm questioning, like, now I'm thinking he lied, lied to the fans and lied to me because he wanted to go to 68 for a big money fight. And it looks like, look, Canelo might have been right. He just wanted the payday because that's how he's acting. He went up to 68, got a payday. Now he's coming down, back down to the weight class. He said he couldn't make. So just, just an observation, right? But anyway, let's get to the comments. Rogier stated the following, and I quote, We have decided to move back down to 160. Boo Boo is all for it. They then started talking about, you know, their roadmap and that the fact that it's not just about Andre coming back down to 160 to become a middleweight champion again. They want to show that he's the best middleweight on the planet. And they also want to show that um, he is one of the all-time greats of the sport. Right? So the fights that Rogier has expressed that he wants for Andre, he stated the following, and I quote, We want to take Arizona Lara's WBA belt, then unify, then fight Johnny Beck to become undisputed. That will solidify Boo Boo Andrade as a Hall of Fame fighter. End quote. So, lots to unpack there. So, we'll start with the first part of that statement. I think the Lara fight would be a good fight. There's obviously history there. A lot of people that don't like Andre like to use the fact that he said that Lara was boring. And that he fought Jack Kolke as a point against him. So, this would actually be Andre addressing and cleaning up one of his old messes. So, I wouldn't mind that fight. The only problem with that is that the WBA at the convention recently that I was just at, they just ordered Arizona Lara to fight Michael Zarafa, Zarafa for the title. And Michael Zarafa has waited patiently for over a year to get his shot. So I don't care what people say, Michael Zarafa should get his shot because he worked his way into that position and he waited a long time for it. Right? So um, once they settle what they got to settle there with the title, then by all means, let, let him fight Lara. And then as far as Johnny Beck, I mean, look, that fight would be great because Johnny Beck also is a fighter that, um, you know, I wanted to see him fight. Um, and he, he avoided him. He avoided the fight. He vacated the belt so he can go to 60 and get a payday. And now he's coming back. And look, this is where my old points, well, why he should have never vacated the belt, are all going to come back into play. Because I always said Andre should have never vacated that belt because that WBO world title was the only, like, position of leverage, the only position of negotiating power he had in boxing. And he couldn't barely he, he could barely get fights with the belt. So now not only does he not have the belt, he has a loss. I'm very intrigued to see what kind of fights he can get at 160. Honestly, um, I'll suggest I'll suggest a fight for Andrade. How about this, right? Because you mentioned you want to fight Lara, right? And you want to go the WBA route. Okay, if you want to go the if you want to go the WBA route and you want to show what you could do. Why don't you fight uh, the number nine contender, the guy that I think is one of the best middleweights in the world? And honestly, if he continues to develop and, 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 and be the best he can be, he might be the best middleweight in the world. 
and that's Ian Green. Ian Green versus Demetrius Andre would be a great fight. Um, it'd be a fight for Andre to really show what he could do with middleweight. Ian Green just took the O of Alexander Castro in one of the most exciting middleweight fights of 2023. In fact, the most exciting middleweight fight of 2023. Then he came back and he fought one of Johnny Beck's old opponents, Vaughn Alexander, at middleweight. Um, a weight that Vaughn Alexander has never lost at. Gave him a full camp, too. None of this short notice nonsense in the sense that some of these other guys have done with Von Alexander. And what did he do with Von Alexander? He stopped him with a body shot. He showed the perfect blend of boxing skills, punching power, just everything you'd want in a fighter. So I think that would be a great fight for Andre um, in, at middleweight and a great fight for Ian Green. I love that fight. But, um, yeah, good, good for him. If he, if he can make 160, good for him. But I'm a little pissed off that I'm, that I'm hearing this because... If you could always make 60, then that means you lied to the fans to go to 60 and get a payday. And on top of that, you're an idiot because, yeah, you made money. Congratulations. But now you have no position to negotiate from at 160. Um, and that's just what it is. That's just, that's just the truth. He could. You know, he was WBO champion. So maybe maybe, maybe because he had status with them, maybe he, maybe he could talk to Paco Varcarcel and they'll grant him a high ranking. But still, to make the fight title that he wants against the Johnny Becks and the Lars, it's going to be harder with no belt and a loss. And that's just truth. So um, that's just how I feel. I love Andre as a fighter. I love him in the ring. You know, I commend him for, you know, trying to be great against uh, Benavidez. You know, obviously Benavidez beat the piss out of him. And, you know, it's very, you know, a lot of people thought he quit in the fight, to be honest with you. And I, I don't blame them for it because, you know, he, he did the best he could with what, what he had at that moment in time, and it wasn't enough. And Benavides beat the piss out of him and beat the fight out of him and, and showed his level on the night. And to some degree, he did expose Demetrius Andre. So I can't, I can't, I can't, um, I can't get mad at anybody who says that, right? So now it's up to Andre to put the finishing touches on his career and, and really try to, to, to show the world that he is one of, not one of, but the best middleweight in the world. And the only way he's going to do that is by fighting the Johnny Becks and the Laras and, you know, I think at some point Ian Green's gonna work his way into the mix too, and, and he'll have to go. Him, Laura, and everybody else have to come see Ian Green at some point. But um, nonetheless, um, yeah, that's the news. Andrade wants to be at sixty again. He, he's already working on a way back down to one sixty. Uh, he's targeting Laura. He's targeting Johnny Beck, and I think those will be great fights for the division and, and, and good middleweight division needs more upper echelon talent. Andrade is definitely that. So the division is better with him than without him. So I'm happy that he's back. I'm just a little like. You could always make the you, you could always make the weight and you come back down, but you said you couldn't make the weight, so you vacated the belt. Come on, man. Anyway, leave your comments down below. Make sure you guys take the time to subscribe. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me. But I'm just a kid from Daniel. So until next time, take your ass. Thank you for watching another video on the Untouchable True School Sports Empire. For more great boxing content just like this video, click right here and make sure you subscribe. Much love from Sunny South Florida.